Welcome back, everyone. Hallmark's line of Heritage Santas bring the art of treasured Hallmark artists to life. And during Look his trip that. to Kansas City, Ken had the chance to meet with the makers of these beautiful Santas. And today he's going to share some of that magical experience with us. And it really was pretty magical for you. Well, right, it is. Going back to Kansas City is always just so inspiring because you're surrounded by these amazing artists. And Hallmark has always done such a great job of heralding these artists. And that's really what the Heritage Collection is sort of all about. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and every year they come out with a new Heritage Santa. But I, like, where did the idea originate from? So it starts, so J.C. Hall, the original founder, you know, he's the one that really is driven from the very beginning all of this sort of love right. of artists. So what the Heritage Collection does is each year they find one of the artists from decades past, take their art, and then reinterpret it into many things, Look including the Santa. So last year's, for instance, was Skip Damon. So you see Skip Damon's art here on the right. Skip Damon didn't design a Santa, but they took the concept of his art and then designed it. This one, it's a very sort of woodsman-y. Beautiful. Sort of, yeah, beautiful colors yes. and really the same yeah. aesthetic from Skip Damon's artwork. So it really is an honor to it be really chosen is. to do a, a Heritage Santa. And this year's Santa that we have here was inspired by one of Hallmark's master artists, Asterio Pascolini, who is Italian, right? Right, okay, so I just got, I, I, I got the Debbie Goose pimples. Okay, I'm gonna tell you the story. The story is so wonderful. You at home are gonna love this. So Asterio Pascolini was born in 1932 in Florence. And at the age of 58, uh, no, in 1958, he was 26, uh, was working at a little local hotel, which is still there in Florence, just behind the front desk. Oh, I have chills already. But as like in his 20s, he would just go out and he would paint the Italian countryside. He would paint the town of Florence. He had a sketchbook, stacks of sketchbooks with all his art. One of the American tourists that were staying at the hotel somehow got one of his sketchbooks. They allowed him to have it. They brought it back and then it passed wow. through hands and somehow ended on J.C. Hall's desk. J.C. Hall like looked through this artwork and it's like, who is this person? I have wrote him a letter. At inviting him to come to Kansas City to go to art school there and to work for Hallmark. Do you so know this is a movie waiting to happen? Isn't it? Asterio packed up wow. everything, came to America, to Kansas City, and for the rest of his life, created artwork for, for Hallmark. That is an incredible, incredible story. Wonderful. I mean, it's inc I mean, obviously, Asterio is, is no longer with us, but you did have the chance to meet uh, the artist that, that uh, designed this beautiful Heritage Santa in honor of Asterio as well as getting a chance to meet his children. Oh, exactly, absolutely wonderful. Let's take a look at that. You're the team right now that's behind the Heritage Santas. We pick out artists that we really love the history and their artwork. With Asterio, he didn't have a Santa to begin with that we could pick from from the archives. So our artists and designers would interpret what he could have done. What his Santa would have looked like. Exactly. Why him? Why did you pick? his artwork. His artwork is just absolutely it's beautiful. beautiful. It really is beautiful. So once you decide like, okay, he's gonna be our artist this year, mm -hmm. you then sort of pull things together to create what the Santa is, right, right. Kita? As soon as I looked at uh, Asterio's artwork, I was impressed by his use of white surface. These beautiful floral and fauna and fruit designs that he creates on this white background, these are the elements that we think best represent his personality, his aesthetic. So. I immediately thought, we have to have a white coat. Oh, interesting. And even though it's not traditional necessarily to have a Santa Claus with a white coat, it would have been traditional to a stereo. It's not a red coat, not the white trim. He's got the floor and fauna. The embroiderer work is gorgeous. You've managed to take those elements and bring them to life in a way that is Christmas with being very distinctive to his original artwork. Well done, Thank well you. done. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. I was fascinated by how the Heritage Santa came to life, but what I really want to know is what the people closest to Hysteria think of it. How do you feel about the Heritage Santa being sort of inspired by your dad? It's overwhelming at first because mm -hmm. you're, you're excited when you hear about it, but then when you actually see it, it's like, wow, this is, this is real. His specific way of painting, he would paint very quickly, very mm -hmm. quickly in watercolor to sort of capture the magic of a moment and then go back through with the pen. Is that the way he sort of lived his life? And he would be sketching while watching the football game and the Hallmark Hall of Fame. He just didn't do one thing. He really gave it his all. I think my dad sketched or did something artistic every single day of his life. And he loved landscapes in Europe and landscapes all over the United States, but he especially loved the countryside around Kansas City. So we'd all be in this station wagon, four kids, my mom, 
some of us, you know, cranky, right. and, you know. And so this is me. And this is me too. These were both Hallmark cards. Look at that, that's gorgeous. Yeah, it was always just really neat how we were all involved in his art. Now, I know your father passed away. How do you think he would have felt about the Santa? He always liked working with artists here. So I think knowing that his work is inspired some of the artists to interpret that, he would have just been so honored by that. There's this wonderful joy of knowing that his artwork is living on and it's gonna make this Christmas really special. Oh, beautiful, beautiful to see that. Ken. Well done, Ken. Well, oh well done. And they they are so loved. They're so excited to get the whole family and actually to have their father will be with them for right, Christmas this course. year. Right, of course. But how excited were you to see their reaction I, to this yeah. Santa that was obviously honoring their father. Exactly, and, and what you don't know is that, that both that, that son and daughter also worked for Hallmark. One is art, she's an art historian, he's a photographer. Me. So it's oh. like that it became art. became a family affair. Has, right, and, like, and J.C. Hall and Hallmark has affected, for them now, generations um, within that Hallmark family. I mean, it's hard not to get choked up and to it's see like, that he would draw his children and they're on the front of Hallmark cards. Oh, my goodness. And, and so, like, like just the stories, like, they come home and find huge Christmas villages that their dad would build and these, you know, watercolors of them out in the, in the country. And it's just really, really lovely to have Beautiful now story. that loveliness brought back to us and in Santa. And not only that, he, this Santa this year, which was inspired by Stereo, is also coming, it has a companion, which is this beautiful angel, which was also inspired it has by Stereo's a companion art. Angel. Now, Stereo had never actually drawn or pictured a Santa. However, he was very religious and had done sketches and watercolors of the Virgin Mary, a very religious um, sort of aspect. Isn't that gorgeous? So they thought only appropriate to also bring in an, an angel to really sort of honor What's Stereo's aesthetic and his beliefs. I mean, I just have to make this point as well. We're so lucky to hear some of this backstory and some of this information that you uh, were able to share with us because uh, otherwise we would see these things and see the beautiful cards and it would right. be gorgeous, but knowing a little there's bit so more about more. how that it all comes people, together. That they're real people, real artists, and that there's there's meaning and substance behind them. I feel, oh. I feel very grateful to be able to hear that. Thank Me you so too. much, Kim. Thank that you, was fantastic. Ken.